In the next couple days, we are going to see the release of Somerville. It's going to come out available on the Xbox and the PC, and of course on Game Pass, and this will be my review for it. In the wake of a catastrophe, you must find the means to make your family whole again. Somerville is a sci-fi adventure grounded in the repercussions of a large-scale conflict. Think flashback inside in Limbo, all smashed together. And that makes sense because the executive producer of those games is also the executive producer of this one. But can all of these different styles of titles come together to make something worth playing? Let's find out. Subscribe if you like the video. Somerville starts out like a horror movie. There's a drone-like shot of a car slowly weaving through forest like it's on its way to a bed and breakfast where the name means disaster in French. As you're cutting through the pines, the music seeps out with a piano and a string section. It's almost dreary the way the song starts and it rolls into this tense arrangement as the car keeps driving along the path like it's working up to something. Then it parks and shows a family getting out of the car and going inside, happy as can be. Cue that moment where you're like, what exactly is going on? Because I wasn't expecting that. It fades to the family asleep on the TV as something odd is occurring. And you begin the game taking on the form of a toddler, weaving through the dark as your parents are asleep, going through this dangerous house, learning the ropes of movement before the crap hits the fan. Or you think it might hit the fan. Because like War of the Worlds, the game flashes and has moments outside of the windows, always threatening you with something, some puzzling moment going on outside. The game sets this tone of familiarity but that constant puzzlement of what's occurring outside continually causes you to move around and try to figure out how to get to a window, how to get just a little farther and peek your head outside. One of the great parts of the game is it knows how to make you continually guess exactly what's going on as the child staring hauntingly at this TV in a moment of something occurring it reminds you a little bit of Poltergeist. Now within a short amount of time after you learn in the ropes something horrible is happening outside and you take on the father figure role. You get knocked down and knocked out after coming into contact with an alien that passes on some kind of strange ability to you. When you wake up everybody is gone and some amount of time has passed. What plays out from there is a six to eight hour puzzle game with you working through this haunted disaster ridden land trying to figure out what's happened once you got knocked out or maybe between then and when you woke up. It's a puzzle based game. You're working through each location trying to figure out small environmental puzzles and then later massive ones that will allow for you to pass through the world. All the while the game keeps throwing these odd instances and moments at you to keep the tension at the very least at foreboding level. Fundamentally the game does play a lot like those other titles that the producers worked on a little bit like flashback as well coincidentally it also looks a lot like flashback due to the flat shading that we see in the art style now i'm not gonna lie a lot of these puzzles that you do they don't make a great deal of sense they don't really need to within the context of a disaster happening but there were a lot of times when i was doing it i was like these are really fun but some of these really don't seem like they're doing much more than just moving me from spot to spot to spot the majority of the time you're using this new found ability that you have to overdrive lighting and electricity, giving you, the character, the ability to melt or destroy this digital alien fungus that you keep seeing all over the land. Sometimes it's stopping you from opening a drawer, other times from moving further into a mysterious military complex. Later on, you also get another power, the ability to harden that alien material, which makes all sorts of puzzles with you melting down sections, moving them around, then placing them somewhere else to harden them, and gets you consistently really thin Thinking. Some of these puzzles were very fun to try to figure out, and I really enjoyed that. One place where Somerville can let you down, though, is the control. The game does hold on to some conventional, pretty hard moments, like that yellow item being interactive that we see in a lot of third-person action games with those being interactive. But in a world like this, with the red and the blue of the powers, as well as the other colors that you get, the colored identification of these yellow movable objects can be a little bit confusing. The issue is that the game has a tendency to desaturate things in shadow, lending these moments in locations where it looks like there might be something that you can move and then you realize after a while of poking and prodding it that it's just an oddly tinted bit of fabric. Somerville has a brutally soft connection system as well when it comes to what you can interact with. Sometimes you can end up sliding and grinding and damn near finger and everything in a small level and along some switch before you get to that just right spot. And the next time you press interact and the character slides like three or four feet to the right and sort of slots into the spot. 
It also changes depending on locations where some spots really require you to do really good spot on testing and others don't require anything at all. Since the game has a free floating animation system, which I got to say looks creepy and cool and all sorts of uncanny valley at times. The other issue is that you can find a spot in the game where you guessed it. You can get eternally stuck on objects and you have to reload the saved checkpoint. Luckily, the saved checkpoints are quite often, but this did happen a couple times. Also rough are the camera angles, panning and tilting like it's trying to out Nolan itself. Other times your character's obscured by a wall and you're stuck on something you can't exactly see and you have to wiggle around. The game also has a number of times where the camera does this shift, entering straight up into a location and then somehow bounding back out. You're confused. You go inside again only to find yourself not moving on and realizing now you need to push lower left or lower right to come out of the area in a different way. This isn't something that happens all the time, but it is certainly something we've seen in other games, and this game is no exception. The big thing I gotta say, though, I love the way the game looks, the way it feels. Weirdly animated flashback worlds, that kind of thing is awesome. Questionable alien spooge stuck to everything, and just when you come out of some quiet place, the game throws these epic scale moments at you with alien debris smashing through the cabin of some car in the background. The game's sense of open scale to the levels means that while you may be passing through a very tiny bit of that level, and the camera work definitely pushes that, you'll always see a bigger and more expansive location around you. It includes a huge number of pulse pounding chases as well. I don't like to use pulse pounding. That's a describer as bad as bombastic to describe music. It's pretty lazy, but that is sort of what it is, especially if I don't want to give you any more data. Just replace nerve wracking or see to your pants. With you springing down a muddy hill as some mysterious purple alien light searches through and around the location and throws areas of light and dark for you to hide in, all the way to just parts where you're consistently moving slowly because you can hear some sound of something scraping against the rock nearby. Now, performance-wise, the game is actually a bit rough on the Series X. It's got some stutters that show up, which is unfortunate because the game likes its panning sections. This is, like I said, a 3D flashback. That means there's a lot of these really cinematic moments that you start to see. Let me tell you something else, though. The swimming parts in this game, they are pure Amazing. The attention to detail, the animation, and the way this game moves when you are swimming around and doing that exploration. Man, games based on swimming could learn a thing or two. Those parts are friggin' awesome. Those swimming sections nail it when it comes to the graphics, the animation, and the feel of your character. Now, when it comes to sound, this is an odd one. I can see a lot of people not liking the audio choices in the game. First, there's a good amount of what is somewhat scrubbed out dynamics, and it gives a bit of a flat sound throughout the entire game. This lets the aliens, when they pop up and shock you and surprise you, work really well, but then they also rub a lot of processing on the outdoor spots and instead of open areas akin to something like let's say a field it's almost like they have reverb instead and it comes across a bit cramped and not necessarily natural this is less noticeable in the cave sections but even here it's got a ton of processing on the sound now voice isn't really voice in this game it's just sound filtered through at times at the start you hear the baby cry or a couple other things but for the most part this is not normal voices that you would get in a lot of games and that sense of not necessarily knowing what's happening or what's being said around you works very well for the mystery Music wise, there isn't a ton of music. What does play, especially at the starting and a couple other places is awesome. It isn't really in your face though. You're not gonna hear it a lot of times, but what you do hear here, what you do hear here, that doesn't make any sense. What you do hear in this game sounds very good. Now let's talk about fun factor. Despite the issues with the painting, despite the issues with the puzzles, not necessarily always really making a lot of sense in the particular locations. And there are times where you're doing a puzzle where a lot of the puzzle itself isn't necessarily your movements. It's you looking at the location going, where am I? And how did this all come about at the same time? There are these tense moments like the first time that you'll walk into what looks to be some kind of homeless shelter for people who have maybe been dispersed due to the alien attack and hearing the tents whipping in the background in the wind, that is fantastic. Not necessarily what you'd call over the top fun, but a really good feeling of emotion and intensity and atmosphere in those spots. And despite the issues that I had with the frame rate, I still really did enjoy the puzzles themselves. There were a couple times where I was trying to figure out a puzzle and was like, what is going on here? And found out that I needed to do something in a different room. So be aware that that will pop up in this game. 
So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent or never touch it again rating system. And luckily this one's on Game Pass as well. This has got a couple issues with performance bar none. It's also something that they've talked about. There's a patch coming that will fix some issues with the sound. I don't think it's gonna fix their overall tonal layer because that certainly does seem to be muted in a particular way distinctly for horror or tension. I had a blast in this game and I think it's worth getting even with some of those stutters and FPS issues. And that would be even if it wasn't on Game Pass. This is a title where I just love the puzzles. I love moving around, trying to figure out the different stuff with you and having that ability to melt the different alien digital fungus and then at the same time make it hard and walk across it and figure out exactly what you were going to do in each section. Totally awesome. That's the kind of puzzle game that I absolutely like. And I can ignore a lot of those what the hell moments if you get that kind of delivery in your puzzle game. This one has it. It isn't the kind of odd, different world that you may expect in, let's say, Limbo or an Inside. It is its very own specific thing. And for that, I adore it. And that's it for me. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe it and share it. Regardless, check out the patron. And if you don't want to do that, go find a YouTuber that you followed that you have forgotten to subscribe to and subscribe to them. It helps, especially with YouTube and the complete disaster it is. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week. Oh, by the way, other big reviews coming.